Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. On the General Hospital today, Michael ignores a call from Curtis on his own phone and checks his phone right before Drew enters. Although he doesn't respond, Drew thanks Michael for meeting to talk about urgent issues. Michael abruptly acknowledges that he told Jason about Willow and Drew's kiss when he is asked if he can explain why Jason attacked him. However, he was unaware that Jason would assault him. Drew wants them to talk honestly about Willow, something none of them wants, in order to get past this. He sincerely apologizes for what transpired. He hopes Michael would forgive him and let him move on, but he has no justifications for what he did. What would I want? Michael only glares at Drew when he claims it was an accidental kiss. Are you certain about that? Drew pleads for permission to repair the harm he inflicted. How is he going to accomplish that? Giving Michael the CEO role is part of restoring trust, according to Drew, but is that the only way to win back his favor? No, that's only a portion of it, adds Drew. Michael is an expert in the position. Michael is the future but Curtis is excellent in the interim. Drew explains that after thanking Curtis and letting him know that he is appreciated but lacks sufficient expertise, they will resolve the matter with the board and proceed. In the end, he never made any promises to Curtis. First up is Michael. I would never have picked Curtis over you. The entire conversation is then captured on Michael's phone. Curtis stops attempting to reach Drew at the gym and has a flashback in which Michael informs him that Drew will fire him as CEO as soon as he arrives in Washington, D.C. When Jordan arrives, he notes how breathless he is, and Curtis acknowledges that he is resolving his frustrations. He informs her that he believes a person he trusts is concealing something. Drew At first, he didn't believe it, but now Drew is avoiding him and acting evasively. Michael informed him that Drew would deceive him and appoint Michael as CEO, but Curtis warns her she can't tell anyone. Jordan believes Drew is simply busy and isn't trying to avoid Curtis, but Curtis isn't sure. While a nurse checks Lulu's monitors and then sits up to rub her legs as soon as she leaves, Lulu is shamming her coma. She attempts to walk once more, this time managing to stay upright. As she stumbles to the couch, she hears Cyrus inform the doctor that he has located a superior long-term institution in South Carolina. Lulu dashes back to her bed to return to her coma. When Cyrus arrives, he claims to have taken care of everything. As quickly as possible, he is trying to get her out of there. As Cyrus departs and the nurses return, Lulu surreptitiously overhears them discussing how the hospital is a madhouse and how they would be receiving a large number of new patients tonight. She unplugs herself, heads toward the door, and slips out along the corridor as they depart. As Lulu lies in her hospital bed with her eyes closed, Cyrus puts a hand on her head. When she reaches the front desk, she hears them discussing moving her to the new facility and she hesitantly retreats. Behind her, she locates and pulls a fire alarm. She grabs the coat and bag the receptionist left behind and runs slowly out the door as the front desk clears out. Cyrus returns shortly after and requests to see Lulu. He dislikes spending a lot of time apart from her. Lulu is changing into a hoodie and slacks outside in order to conceal herself. She stutters into the darkness. When Alexis and Sonny arrive at the courthouse, they inquire about Christina's health. She wants it all over so Ava can pay for what she did, but she's fine. When Molly and TJ arrive, Molly assures her sister that she has it. Jocelyn and Trina walk inside the courtroom, and Trina gives her boss a smile. Rick and Ava watch as everyone begins to stream in, with Joss and Gio taking seats on the opposite side of the room. The prosecution presents her case to the jury at the start of the trial, explaining why Ava is guilty. Christina rides uneasily as she remembers their altercation and falling out of the window. Ava gives her a scowl and Rick stands up to make his own opening remarks, claiming that this was all a tragedy rather than a vicious assault by his client. 
He doesn't think Ava will be found guilty at the conclusion of the trial. Christina lost her own child as a result of her rage and attack. Rick blames Christina for everything. Gio comes next, after Natalia, who describes what she witnessed when Christina fell. Jocelyn then describes Christina's condition when she was discovered in the pool. After that, we return to Natalia and discuss Christina's cut, bleeding, and still body. Joss and Christina discuss heading to the ambulance. After some prodding from the prosecutor, Trina then describes what she did and how she looked up to find Ava standing in the window. Rick then stands up to say that although Trina saw Ava, she was unable to identify the person or the reason behind the fall. Christina's OBGYN then takes the stand and claims that the baby would have been born healthy. Another doctor describes how they were unable to preserve the baby due to the miscarriage induced by the fall. He responds that he did not find any defensive wounds as Rick stands back up to ask. Nothing definitive was found. Ava informs her lawyer that they are being destroyed up there when the judge announces a recess. After a little interval, Alexis and Sunny inform their daughter that she has been doing well. After that, Christina is called to testify when the court reconvenes. In response to questions about becoming Molly and TJ's surrogate, she discusses becoming pregnant for Molly and the baby's overall health during the pregnancy. As she tells about her bond with the infant, Molly and TJ listen with sadness. I have never been happier in my life than I was at that moment. They move on after Rick objections. What transpired on the day of the fall and how Christina knows Ava will be discussed next. I'm prepared to discuss what Ava did to me. Before she raged at Christina, grabbed her arm, and shoved her through the window, she explained the subpoena, the altercation, and her pleas to Ava. In the hospital, Lulu looks forward tensely while wearing a medical gown. Michael informs Drew that they have an agreement in the last moments of the performance. To Drew's relief, they tremble, and Michael expresses optimism over Aurora's future. After Drew leaves, Michael picks up his phone, contacts Curtis, and plays the recording of Drew telling him that he would never pick him over Michael and that Curtis is returning to wellness. Do you now believe me? Michael claims that as long as Curtis is present, they can alter it. Christina talks about her memories of the actual fall, including how everything turned black and how she came to in the ambulance. Then she passed out again, woke up in pain and confusion, and discovered she had lost the baby. As Christina realizes that it was because Ava killed her daughter, Ava simply glares at her the entire time. Rick says he will be quick and asks if she needs a moment. Why are you lying? Follows.so What do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like. And subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.